So sometimes when I am working with my online TIG welding students, I see this pesky little problem that pops up once in a while, especially when somebody is first learning how to TIG weld. Let's take a look at this photo here. What you're looking at is an example of an exercise I did actually on my channel just a couple weeks ago. What you're looking at here is a really simple exercise. But while it may seem simple, it actually shows me a ton of really important stuff. Now what I wanna do is I wanna take a look at this area right here just around the cleaning action like the area that I have highlighted here. So do you see this area that kind of looks a little bit scratchy or like a staticky looking cleaning action? To beginners, I actually kind of describe this as looking a little bit like lightning. What you're looking at here is a term that I refer to as arc deflection. So the term arc deflection is actually something that typically happens at low amperage, most commonly at the start of a weld, but it can definitely happen at the end of a pass as you back off the foot pedal as well. So what is arc deflection? Arc deflection is essentially where our arc is struggling to maintain and establish a proper puddle or arc cone with the area that we are aiming at. It can cause you to lose accuracy with your arc. So if you're working on really thin stuff, it's actually really important to pay attention to this. So when we are TIG welding, what we are doing is essentially creating an electrical arc, which is creating a proper and stable environment for us to begin welding with. So essentially the really important job that our little tungsten has to do here is directing our arc as accurately as possible and have the cleanest and most established conditions for a proper weld puddle that we can form and manipulate. So what is happening when we experience arc deflection like you're looking at here, you see it shooting off to the side? What is happening is now our arc is having problems establishing cleanly and remaining accurate and our arc is essentially losing its connection to do so smoothly. Again, this is super slow-mo, this is just a brief little flicker but it is enough to cause a problem with your accuracy now what are some other problems that can happen because of this the first thing that's probably the most common and I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with is you're gonna see the end of your filler material start to ball up or in some cases you might even see the end of it being blown off completely this is super super freaking annoying typically this is common when somebody pulls back with their standoff distance or their arc length whatever you want to call it what is going to happen is when you pull back with your standoff distance your arc is going to start to lose its solid connection with the workpiece you're going to notice some arc deflection like this it's going to hit the filler rod it's going to be really annoying so any attempt to get your filler material into the weld pool as smoothly as possible, this is always gonna be extremely difficult to deal with. When you go to put the filler material into the weld pool and the end of your filler material does this. So if you have the end of your filler material being all sketchy and being blown off and misshapen, you are not gonna have an easy time getting the filler material to go into the weld pool the way that you want it to. This is absolutely one of the most common things that arc deflection can do, it's really annoying. All right, so probably the second most common problem that I see is the effect it can have on the overall finish of your welds. So obviously when we are doing aluminum TIG welding, we want a finish that is shiny and as uniform as possible. When we really get the sweet spot of getting our stuff as shiny as possible, good looking cleaning action, aluminum TIG welding looks awesome. But as we start to experience problems with arc deflection, this can actually make some differences with our overall finish, more specifically on the cleaning action. So what we want to happen with our cleaning action is it's gonna clear away the oxide on the surface of the aluminum, which allows us to weld on aluminum. It's gonna make an environment where it is now possible to weld on the aluminum, kind of pushes all this stuff off to the sides like a little snow plow. So sometimes when we are practicing, we see heavy and erratic cleaning action like the example you're looking at here. Now do you see how the edges of the cleaning action look erratic and uneven? So especially when we are dealing with some arc deflection, it's gonna cause us to lose the finish to our aluminum TIG welding that we want. All right, the third thing, this is one of the most annoying things that arc deflection is gonna cause. This is gonna come more so at the start of each weld. This happens more so when you are working on really thin material. Arc deflection could cause your arc to lose its accuracy. So while it's so important to aim at an area like this with some thin material, when we start up, we want our arc to establish cleanly and lock onto this area as accurately as possible. With arc deflection, this arc is gonna shoot off to either side. So now that we know a couple different ways that arc deflection can mess with us, how do we take care of it? I would say in my experience, about nine times out of 10, this first solution here is probably gonna be the most common solution for this problem. Take a look at this tungsten here. 
This thing is trashed. It looks terrible. See how the overall finish is now all crusty and irregular and gross. This thing looks like we found it behind a dumpster behind 7-Eleven. It's disgusting. Get it out of my sight. Check out this footage here. At low amperage, you can see when I am establishing my arc. Look at the arc deflection. We can see it farting around. We can see it darting off to the side. The arc is not being established as cleanly as we want. As we know, we go over this all the time on my channel. The most important part of every weld is, come on, can you guess? It is the start. If we have a bad start with an arc that is not stable, the rest of the pass is gonna be a pain in the butt. Take a look at this fresh tungsten here. Much better, right? Starting a pass out with this one, look at how much more cleanly it establishes itself with the base material. Watch it again in slow motion. It locks on much more easily. And now we compare it to the one with the rougher finish and we see the arc deflection here. You can see why this is so important to keep a fresh and properly prepared tungsten in your torch. Now let's look at another problem that can cause arc deflection and this one is so simple. And this is working with excessive standoff distance or arc length, whatever you want to call it. Because what happens when we get into working with excessive standoff distance, we are going to see our arc begin to lose its stability and start to result in arc deflection. Like I said, especially at low amps, this is really easy to see this happen. Working with thin material, you can imagine how easily this is going to mess your day up. So as we start to tighten up our standoff distance or arc length or whatever, look at how much more efficiently our arc is established when we start. We can see that when the puddle forms, it is established much more cleanly. We don't see any arc deflection flickering on either side. So when we finally start moving and we start to put filler material into this puddle, we are gonna be able to do so much easier. So because we are now working with a tighter and more efficient standoff distance, our cleaning action is also gonna be able to do its job perfectly as well. And when this happens, we are gonna see much cleaner results. Taking a look at this example here, look at the cleaning action. Do you see how much more smooth and consistent this looks? Take a look at the example from before. It's super erratic and uneven. Here we see great examples that everything has established really nicely. The cleaning action is nice and consistent. This is exactly what we want. And obviously take a look at the weld itself. We see it is much cleaner and much more consistent. This is exactly the shiny finish we want with aluminum. Being in tighter with the standoff distance or arc length, whatever, it allows us to establish a much cleaner and much more stable puddle. And it allows for the conditions of a good arc. We have good gas supply because we're in nice and close. These two things are gonna give us the best results possible. Possible. Now, like I said, imagine having a start that was established a little more roughly and a little bit more inaccurately. And when we flashed up, we do not get the puddle that we want right at the start. Adding filler material is gonna be much more difficult and controlling this puddle is gonna be a lot more erratic and tricky to manipulate. Again, once we start moving, we wanna start moving with the most accuracy and most control that we can. Again, trying to hit this sweet spot of a perfect start and perfect filler material going into it. This is one of the most important parts of every weld. I'm going to keep saying it forever. I don't care. So that once we start traveling and we are now advancing through a joint, we control all of these important variables the best we can. As we talked about one of the most annoying things when dealing with arc deflection, this problem can come from your gear. Watch this episode next. This is going to break down some of the most common gear problems that I help my students out with when they're experiencing problems like this. And these problems are really common. You might not even know that they're happening to you. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty, Phil and Chill. We will talk soon. Peace.